Yep, 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 it's Project Nigel, yep, 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 it's Project Nigel, yep, 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 it's Project Nigel. What a stupid introduction. Tahiti Blue R8. My friend whose name begins with a T has dropped this off because he's borrowing my ZS for a couple of days. And that's fine with me because I have Nigel that I can use, or this uh, Calibra, or even the rather sad Rover 45 with the handbrake issue. But cars that get dropped off in my yard get used. And first of all, they get washed. From this distance, uh, it looks quite nice. But then once you start getting close, you can see the paint isn't particularly good. It's got all sorts of fine scratches everywhere and all sorts of scratches I can't really get rid of. But I do think it would be nice to clean it up so when he comes back he has a pleasant surprise. Anyway, I'm not going to go mad trying to get this looking all pristine, but let's have a quick before and after shot of that door there. There we have it. What it actually needs is a machine polish. Yep, yeah, definitely. It looks a bit better, but all of these scratches and things there, they're not going to just come out. Anyway, the worst part is this door and that rear quarter there. Look at that. Look at all very, very, um, uh, what's the word for that? I cannot think of the word, but the word's definitely there. Hazy, that's it. Now, unfortunately, the paint is actually very smooth. That might sound like a bit of an odd thing to say, but it means that the clay bar isn't really picking up a great deal of contaminants, which means it's not going to get much better. One thing I get accused of quite a lot is polishing the turd. Short day at work, as it is a Sunday. Uh, it's such a treat to be sat inside an R8 again. I do a video review of this car, but oh, you've done one, haven't I? I did a 416 SLI automatic. Well, this one's a manual, but it's basically the same thing, just with a different box. What I really want to try out, R8 wise, are uh, Tura, uh, the Cabriolet, and the Coupe, and anything with a turbo or uh, the uh, M series engine, because this is another Honda. Pulls quite well. I've been told the tyres have got a couple of flat spots, so as you drive along at any speed, it starts to bob up and down a little bit. But it doesn't feel that bad actually. In fact, I probably wouldn't have even noticed that. I'm a bit numb, you know. Starts so easily. Cracking engine, this. As an everyday retro classic car, I don't think the R8 is uh, surpassable, personally. It's just so well put together. It's such a nice car to drive. You can drive it every day and it'll always work. It was probably the best car that Rover ever made. And it's just, it's a fantastic car. One thing I notice about people in older cars, often they don't, uh, uh, certain types of car drivers don't see you coming the other way an old Ford coming the other way. Either they're not going to acknowledge anyone in anything other than a Ford, or they don't because they're too busy looking down at the dials, making sure they haven't overheated or something. Or making sure they haven't run out of petrol. You know, when you drive an old Ford, you've always got that to consider. Running out of petrol, breaking down, rusting away at the side of the road. What's, whichever comes first. I've only done a few miles in this car and it isn't the best Rover going. But I just know I need another R8 in my life. I need another Rover R8. It's my favourite car. I'm convinced of it. My Project Nigel, the Rover 25, is fantastic. I really enjoy driving that. But it's not quite the same. ZS, also, very nice looking car, very nice colour. But it's not the same as this. I want another one of these, and this one would do, even though it's not really good enough. When a car that isn't good enough is good enough, that tells you an awful lot about how good the car is.